Uh, gentlemen, MLB price check. So your favorite plays at the following price ranges for tonight's main slate. I believe it's a shorter one, a smaller one. Let's go pitcher over 8K. Start us off, Ducey. Well, this is, well, first of all, I'm so happy to be back talking ball. I think that this is a tough one right now because you look at the options. Freddie Peralta is the most expensive one, maybe a little too pricey. He is probably my favorite option, but there's real weather concerns there. In Chicago, we saw last night what the weather can do. Uh, you, you look around, Lucas Giolito in a funk. Joe Musgrove, probably the most likely to win, but he's been really underwhelming from a fantasy perspective. So I think I have to fall on uh, a guy that I don't really like to play a whole lot, but a guy that's been red hot over the last, I don't know, two months, uh, maybe even three months, and that's Luis Castillo. Hardly a, a bad play. $10,000 is going to be expensive, but when you talk about the strikeout upside with him, uh, he, he hasn't gone under seven strikeouts in his last four starts, and he's got a very good matchup tonight against the Cleveland Indians, a team that doesn't make a lot of hard contact. They rank near the bottom of the league in that in the last two weeks. So you don't have to worry about the home runs like you do sometimes with Luis Castillo with that high velocity, sometimes has a tendency to go a lot of hard hit balls. Uh, Jose Ramirez is really the only guy you have to worry about. They're trotting out like a triple-A lineup these days. I mean, Premier Reyes is there as well. But, uh, yeah, Nick Miller or Owen Miller is the – I watched too much New Girl. Owen Miller is the guy that is, is really like, you know, did the damage against the Tigers yesterday. So, yeah, I, I'm not really worried about Cleveland. Uh, I like firing up Luis Castillo. Okay, Paul, uh, what about you? Who are you going to fire up? A pitcher over 8K. Five games on this slate. Kenny was all over it. I'm right with him. Uh, Freddie Peralta is putting up video game numbers in his last 10 starts. Guys allowing only 25 hits. I had to check this a couple of times. 25 hits in his last 57 and a third innings pitch for a 129 batting average while striking out 71 batters and allowing only four homers along the way. He faces a weak Cubs offense that's 2-10 and 10 in their last 10 outings and it'll cost you 10 grand as was indicated louis castillo priced at 10 grand even will be facing the indians on the road tonight and is one on one of his best streaks of the year over his last 10 starts a four and one record backed by a 170 era in his last 63 innings pitch his whip is a decent 1.19 despite 49 hits allowed and only four homers in that stretch so good numbers in for him but i land on joe musgrove uh, for eighty five hundred dollars the cheapest in this range and looks like a solid option based on his quality of his last three starts covering 19 innings surrendering only 13 hits and five walks while striking out 20 batters these numbers aren't fluke opposing batters are hitting only 195 and a whip of 0.97 over his 122 innings pitched on the season while he struck out 139 batters the miami team is batting uh ranked 27th in OPS on the season. So all that adds up to a nice bet for me on Joe Musgrove tonight at 8,500 bucks. All right, Eric, who's your pitcher you're paying up for? Yeah, I like this small slates. It's the same size, I think, as the KBO slate. That's that's coming back. Give a quick shout out to uh, World Baseball uh, coming back for the first slate in a month tonight. Uh, but over on the MLB side with our KBO size slate, um, they really are just those four good guys at the top. I think the three we've touched on and Lucas Giolito, I think they're all fine plays. Musgrove is, I think, the most interesting to me. He's the cheapest of the four at 8,500 by a decent margin. I think he's got the best matchup, too. Probably, I, th I think the Marlins are still weaker than whatever's left of the Cubs, although I guess you could say it's pretty close. Marlins are 25th by WRC Plus on the season. He's got one of the best parks to pitch in in Petco. Uh, he's got a 2.87 ERA, and that's a little bit better than what the ERA estimators have for him on the year. Um, he hasn't matched his incredible 33.1% strikeout rate from last season, but he's still at 27.9% uh, this year. Uh, while he's had some lower strikeout numbers lately, that's still a high enough mark that he has the potential for that huge total on any given night. Uh, so I think I'm happy with any of those top guys. I think I'm probably likely to play two of them on this slate. Um, for reasons we'll probably get into in a minute. But I think he, he's the best bargain. Um, so he, he's my top choice. Uh, Paul, take me to a hitter over 5K, please. I'll highlight three of them. My favorite, though, off the top, Emerson, is uh, Manny Machado tonight versus Miami for 5900 bucks. A power bat that's on a roll in consideration is 14 for 40 tear with five extra base knocks, including included add up to a 
OPS that's north of one. So that's outstanding for a power hitter that uh, I'm all over that one tonight. I also like Willie Adamas for 5,500 bucks based on his 13 for 43 mark in the la his last 10 games with an OPS also just north of one and including four homers and ex eight extra base hits. He faces Alec Mills, who has not fooled too many batters in his last few starts. So that's also a nice matchup. And it's hard to ignore Joey Votto of late he, as he's on an 11 for 39 run with six homers and his last 10 games played. He does get that one-on-one -on -one matchup against Castillo, though. So it comes down to your belief in a hot batter over a very tough pitcher in this spot. So I like the top two guys that I mentioned here. Okay, Eric, how about you? Well, Paul's got three. I kind of have none. Uh, I'm looking at basically everybody over 5,000. Um, nearly every hitter either it won't get the platoon advantage. Um, there, obviously, you can still play guys without the platoon advantage, but either they won't have that or they're facing one of those four aces we talked about earlier. Uh, there aren't, like, say, so even those top Reds guys I would ordinarily like, but a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup for the likes of Joey Votto makes me a little bit less interested. Uh, Joey Gallo is, I think, the only guy who will get the platoon advantage, but he's been a bit shaky lately, or will get the platoon advantage against uh, a non-elite starter. So I think given those options, I'm probably staying cheap on the hitting side and going with two expensive pitchers. But I do like Manny Machado if I have to uh, pay up for somebody uh, all the way up at 5,900. He's just been super hot in the second half. In the first half, he was merely good, an 833 OPS. He's got a 1047 OPS, six homers, 17 RBI in his last 20 games. And so that's good enough for me if I have to pay up for one guy. All right, Kenny, bring us home here on a hitter over 5K you will roster. Come on, there's no one with the platoon advantage. How about Willie Adamas with the reverse splits going against Alex Mills? He hits 280 against righties this year and 867 OPS. He has crushed righties. He's been terrible against lefties. And I'm surprised Paul mentioned him. I didn't think anyone was going to be on Willie Adamas tonight at $5,500. Not exactly a hot bat. He did have a good game yesterday. But look, here's the reason I love him. Alec Mills is a bad sinker ball pitcher. And what does Willie Adamas do? He hits the sinker very well. Four homers off of sinkers this year, a 563 X slug. Those are very good numbers. This is a very good hitter. He's hitting in the heart of a lineup that I think is going to do a lot of damage today against the Cubs team that is running a guy, Manuel Rodriguez pitched last night. Does anyone know who that is? Oh, they're, yeah. they're not, their bullpen is not looking good. So I think that I like the matchup with Alec Mills. I'm probably going to like it even more with some of these no name righties that the Cubs have now as their season winds down. Uh, Willie Adamas, a great bat tonight. I think he's going to go up. Uh, Eric, best value bat on this slate. Yeah, I, I do like that call with the reverse splits there, but I'm going to go back to the normal platoon advantage here and talk about Eugenio Suarez. Uh, he has not had a good year. Uh, so pricing him at 4,000 may look not great. Uh, he's got a WRC plus of just 68. He's hitting just 176. He was already starting to slip last year uh, with a WRC plus of just 104, barely above average. And, you know, he's going to lose playing time. So for season long fantasy purposes, I might want to think about dropping him now that Mike Moustakas is back. They're expected to platoon at third base uh, for now with the Reds seemingly dropping the Suarez at shortstop experiment that did not work at all well early in the season. But Suarez should still be there against lefties, and he's got quite a friendly matchup today against Sam Hentges for Cleveland, 786 ERA on the season. Uh, ERA estimator sitting right around five, not a particularly highly rated prospect, below average strikeout rate, walks too many guys, just not, not a lot to like there. Suarez, even in his good stretches this season, hasn't been elite, but he does have four homers in his last nine games, has a WRC plus of 116 over that stretch. That's enough there for me, and 4,000 is not that expensive. So it's a guy who's still, especially in those larger tournaments where you need to spike a couple homers to place as high as you want to, he's got the power to do that, even though he's got as good a chance at a zero as just about anybody on the slate. Uh, Kenny, need a value bat from you, please. Yeah, I, I hope this constitutes his value because I want to talk about this guy. And, and we mentioned it with Sam Atengis. He's really bad. And a guy that has a splits advantage against him who has been red hot, one of the best hitters in baseball over the last month is Kyle Farmer. He's still only $3,900. He's hitting right in the middle of that Reds lineup. And this is a guy that just continues to get hits. He's on a five-game hitting streak. He's got uh, a boatload of them over the last month. 
it, it the, the floor here is very high for Kyle Farmer. And I think that the ceiling is, you know, a 20 point game with a home run off of Sam Atengis. We don't have to talk much more about how bad uh, he's been and how good Kyle Farmer has been. And he's just mashed lefties 8.4 fantasy points per game against lefties. So I really like this matchup. He's been mashing. Go with him. Paul. I'll give you a three. Max Kepler can point to an eight for 29 head-to-head history against Lucas Giolito, which includes three homers and only two strikeouts. So that those are good numbers for 4,800 bucks tonight. How about Ahmed Rosario for 4,100, considering his recent 13 for 40 stretch, which includes six extra base knocks. He has four hits and a limited nine at bat sample against Castillo as well. Cheaper than these guys, though, I like Eric Hosmer's power and platoon advantage, coupled with his most recent 11 for 30 record for 3,800 bucks is the best bet in my top three in this range. All right, let's switch gears here real quick before we wrap up, guys, and talk about the DK Sportsbook. So what is your favorite bet on the MLB slate tonight, Paul? I like the alternate run line, as you know, Emerson. I look at the potent Yankee lineup that was on a tear until they were blank yesterday. They'll bounce back against Carlos Hernandez and his loaded ERA tonight. That'll go a long way toward these clubs getting the alternate run line above 11 and a half for a plus 150 payoff. Speaking of potent offenses, I like the alternate run line bet of over 11 and a half runs for a 160 payoff in the game between the Twins and the White Sox, in part because it was a it be a bullpen start for Minnesota as well. And I also like the alternate run line to be under 6.5 in the tilt between Padres and the anemic Marlins, largely on the belief that Joe Musgrove will be effective in continuing his recent role. That bet pays off at plus 140. Kenny, favorite baseball bet is what? Uh, yeah, I, I like that Yankees call. I'm going to go with the Yankees minus half a run at minus 120. Uh, for the first five innings, Jamison Tyone has been on fire. Ten strikeouts, the uh, Royals and 82 or 86 WRC plus since the break. And when you look at Carlos Hernandez, he has one of the fastest fastballs in the game. Throws about 98 on average. But the Yankees have a ton of great fastball hitters. This is not the way to get the Yankees out, a right-handed fastball pitcher. So I really like this matchup. I know going away from Yankee Stadium, the power has not been very good since the break. And going away from Yankee Stadium, I'm scared about the Yankees' power. I really am. But Hernandez with that 14% walk rate, the Yankees, one of the best walking teams in all of baseball. I think that this is a very good matchup for them. And it's they're underpriced here because of those said power concerns leaving Yankee Stadium. I think they get it done tonight. All right, Eric, uh, bring us home. Need a DK Sportsbook baseball bet from you. Yeah, with such a small slate, I'm not surprised that we have a bit of disagreement here. I think all of the favorites are quite clear favorites. I think minus 170 is as close as it gets. So I'm going to take the Royals at plus 150 over those Yankees. Um, A lot of that's because the Yankees are quite banged up at the moment, and they actually haven't been hitting well. In the second half, they rank just 20th by WRC+. Plus. That's still better than the Royals. Uh, This is not an endorsement of the Royals roster right now. But the Yankees, without Anthony Rizzo and Gary Sanchez on the COVID-19 injured list, Araldis Chapman, Gio Urshela on the normal injured list, Uh, Glaber Torres, I guess we can debate how much of a loss he is this year, but he was uh, banged up in Sunday's game, left with a thumb injury. So this is not the fully powered Yankees offense. Obviously, there's still many bats there that the Royals would be happy to have. But at plus 150, I think that's a pretty decent price for the Royals, considering that Carlos Hernandez, nothing special, but ERA in the mid fours, estimators in the mid fours is actually right where Jamison Tyone's ERA estimators are. I know he's coming off a good start, but Tyone hasn't been anything special this year. Hernandez strikes a lot of guys out, walks way too many. But in his last two starts, both of which have come against the White Sox, who have one of the best lineups in the league, he's allowed just a single earned run in 11 innings. So he's showing enough lately that I think that makes the Royals uh, the best underdog bet tonight. 